Jacob, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. I'm looking forward to this and hopefully we can get some insights and give some insights today. Yeah, so we uh, touched base on Instagram and um, we spoke, which normally, you know, is unusual for both of us, but you are a twin flame, but you're also like a divine channel of some sort. And I want to get all into it. So your social media links, I'm going to add to the description. It's Alia Coop, right? And yes, Alia G. Coop okay. at uh, Instagram. So hopefully whoever wants to reach out can reach out to me. So tell us more about yourself and um, your background, where you are, because I know you're in Saudi Arabia, right? So um, let's start very way. Uh, when was I Born. very intuitive? Let's start from birth. <laughs> Let's start from I, I always felt like I had this divine connection with the universe. I mean, in a very, very early age of my life. And I... I had a very high intuition, but not how I have now. So I usually would have dreams and see dreams that sometimes I have this premonition or feel something. And I just didn't know what it was or what was the universe, you know, going to get me into. Um, I think uh, not until 2020 when COVID hit was I was sitting down in a prayer and asking the universe, you know, I felt like my life was so not, didn't have any purpose in it, right? And then I was just like, you know, universe, you know who I am. What are my capabilities? You know, what is my personality? What are my strengths? What are my my weaknesses? Use me. Now be careful what you wish for, because <laughs> a prayer only means that it is asking the universe or God or source or higher power, wherever you want to want to name it, into let me expand this vessel to hold this vibration. And then and what happened? What happened? <laughs> universe sent me somebody to as a catalyst to awaken me in all aspects possible. And at that moment, I thought that that was my twin flame, not knowing that I actually met my twin flame 20 years ago. Right. So, so we're going to have to unpack all of this, all of this. So <laughs> you are, okay. Do you, do you consider yourself as Muslim? Yes, I am Muslim, but I'm very open to different faiths because I believe that there's truth in every religion and everywhere. And I think that divine guidance is in in and and whoever wants to seek truth will will seek the truth so it is not a um it is not like something that i'm where i'm confined into it because when you're on the spiritual path you don't only give guidance to say a specific religion but you give a universal guidance to whoever universe presents itself. So I had many times I had different people from different faiths come to me to ask for help or guidance. And you're always open with an open heart because you serve the universe regardless. So um, you were born in Saudi Arabia or somewhere else? No, I was actually uh, born to the States. I, I was born in the States from multiculture. So my mother, my father is originally half Jordanian, half Lebanese. My mother is uh, is actually uh, from Latina. And I've lived most of my life here in Saudi Arabia. So you come from mixed heritages and now you live in Saudi Arabia. And then as a young person, you said you always connect, felt connected to the divine. Um, did that ever cause any conflict with your faith or your family? Did they think she's possessed or crazy or anything like that because that happens it happens to, it's happened to me so <laughs> uh yeah i mean uh, at times yeah people would say like i'm possessed but i know better you know when you are on this path you ask for proof you ask for evidence you ask for you know show me the truth show me the signs and then once it's one after another every time proving to you that truth and that evidence and that sign it would only be logical to believe in it right and then this is the this is the also something we always ask ourselves so why not me why me 
You know, like, why would the universe choose me to whatever? But then always the question is, why not you? You know, if the universe or the divine or God or whatever you want to label this higher ultimate supreme power was able to do everything possible, why couldn't it not communicate with you? So this is, this is important that it always can be you. But you just need to be open and receptive to it. And I guess a lot of people don't feel worthy of being that connection to God, um, not feeling they're good enough. So, okay, so you brought up most of your life, you were spiritually connected, and then you meet your catalyst or you meet your twin flame. What happens? And, and were you looking for that? Did you know about it? I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I didn't even know what was twin flame. Nothing about these things. It was just like, okay, here I am asking God for something. And then, you know, I ask God, so, okay, what guide me, right? That was the first thing, guide me. What am I going to do? Make me have purpose in life. And then I got into this spiritual journey, which uh, I was like, with this, I was looking on YouTube and I saw this guy and he was, and I was like, hmm, he has a spiritual journey. And of course, one thing led to another. And then it was like, oh, it costs like a thousand pounds to get into this thing. And at that time, I didn't have a thousand pounds, but I was already starting to channel and here and they're like don't worry about it you know you're gonna get the thousand pounds just sign up and i signed up and everything and surely a thousand pounds came in hand for that and when i was there i was learning how to meditate uh, in a way it was initiating i mean i saw my spiritual animals I, I didn't know nothing what was i going through for me it's a very i come from a culture or a background or where i live that is very conservative and very into its ways of, of islam and muslim and what can it be and what's religion and what is god and what is all these things and we have these paradigms that you know god is so elite in his ways that is untouchable that will not touch no human right and here i am starting to channel the divine and i'm like okay this is weird because it's, it's flipping all my con concepts and my conceptions of life and what i believe is or isn't so i actually thought that i was i was going mad I was crazy. I mean, I remember calling my friend and telling her, you know what, I'm going to a psychologist. And, you know, I studied a lot of therapy, but I was like, okay, but I don't, I don't see like, am I schizophrenic? Am I this? Am I that? You know? And then I was like, but yeah, I might have one aspect, but not all the aspects. And I'm multifunctioning in my life. I'm a very good multitasker and I'm, I'm functioning in many aspects and thriving. I can't be insane. Right? So this was in 2020 with your catalyst? Or this is 2020. Correct. This is before the catalyst comes in and, and, get into this and i'm just like okay i'm going crazy i'm going crazy literally i would sit down and cry for days end and be like you know there's something wrong with me there's something wrong with me why am i okay and i go through all these things i can hear i can hear channeling i can hear voices i can hear things i can hear guidance i can hear stuff but i'm like well then why me why me okay no 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 i'm schizophrenic no i'm crazy uh i i must be insane i gotta ask a psychologist psychiatrist and then uh of course god always sends you people to help you and my friend was like you know you're not going crazy because you're functioning in every aspect of life and i was like are you sure i don't need to go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist and she was like i am very sure i know you too well and if you needed it i'll be the first one that's taking you if the divine is coming to you to help you now she's not spiritual but god knows why how she how she had this message for me right and she was like if god has intended this for you then maybe there's something bigger to your life and i was like and of course i have days that i would deny it and then the next days i'll be accepting it so this and it goes always, back and forth you said you were always spiritual but in 2020 something real deep happened that opened your gifts correct correct and then all of a yes. sudden you were hearing things, seeing things, you thought you were going crazy insane. How did you manage that? Um, was that your Kundalini awakening? What was it? No, it wasn't a Kundalini awakening, but it was preparing me for a Kundalini awakening. And because a Kundalini awakening can only, not, not I cannot say can only be activated through a twin flame, but 
my Kundalini awakening ap activated through my twin flame. All twin flames have their awakening through the Kundalini with their twin flame, but you can do it through other ways. Yeah. I've heard, but I don't. I don't know. But my own personal experience, I had my Kundalini awakening through my twin flame. So it was just preparing me through that, and it was awakening me through that. But it was it was bringing me gradually step by step. Now, mind you, I was a very egoistic person, and I was my way or the highway, and I was very perfectionist. And so, the universe is not going to come down and say you know what let's shift you from zero to 180 in one day and shift who you are it has to gradually takes take in place because the person as a human being we cannot take sudden changes very well because our mind will just block it our our as our existence will just block it and we will not accept it to our truth so gradually the universe will take and now some people gradually can be half a year and some people can be four years and some people can be whatever x y and z because it's a personal journey it's not it, it's this was my own journey but does it mean does it affect is is it one size fits all no it isn't because we have different journeys and it's really interesting you talk about the ego so your twin flame is your ego destroyer as are you theirs and I find this journey teaches you the art of humility and being humble, which is taught in all religions, actually. But we all have this ego, even a spiritual ego, right? So you said that you were being drip, drip fed, perhaps. I don't know if that's the best term with your awakening or whatever was going on with you. And then you said you had a big ego, but I don't see that anymore now. Do you feel like you've had you've worked on that now? Or the, I mean, the ego is always there. It's a, it's a beast that you constantly have to you know about um tackle tame. yeah tame, tame exactly tame the beast you must tame so how do you tame your like ego and well it i will say um it's shifted a lot a lot i i am not that same person anymore does do I have times that it comes out and it creeps out like like skeletons in a closet yes there is times, but then I have to remind myself, I choose to see something differently. I choose to not judge. And so that calms me down. And I ask the, the universe or God or the divine, and I ask him, I choose to see this differently, show me differently and trust me. So once you say that, trust me, the divine will show you a different, a different side of things and explain things better so you don't judge it. Um, and that calms me down. That's it calms me down. I'm listening. Like for me, it's just about staying as close to the ground as possible, and making it about God. So, um, let's let's get into it. The whole twin flame catalyst, because people out there talk about karmics and all sorts of twin flames and soulmates catalysts. So you you didn't know you met your twin flame 20 years prior, but you didn't know they were your twin flame, and then you found out later. Like explain that and the catalyst, and how can you tell who is what. Okay, well, I cannot tell who was what because I was channeled this is this until after the experience was over. And I was like, are you kidding me, universe? You're putting me a loophole here, you know? And so I can't say that I know what was the difference because I didn't know the term twin flame until I met my catalyst. So I'll be very specifically honest. When it came to my true twin flame 20 years ago, I felt there's this connection. There was this obsession and there was this big separation for 10 years. And I always felt drawn to people who had that same characteristics. I would always come back to this person, not knowing it was a twin flame or not knowing this term because I shoved it down inside of me, but I wasn't doing the work. Okay, this is what I want to um, unpick because you get divine feminines who say they're in separation for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, I don't know how many ever years. And I feel like right now the environment, the, the, the earth and the resonance and the frequency is very conducive for waking up right now. But I always find for me that the ones, perhaps, I don't want to be judgmental, but the ones who have 
a long separation is perhaps because they didn't realize they were twin flame, they didn't do the inner work, they were, you know, focused elsewhere or obsessed or they were going with other people or getting married or just basically living a life that was outside, not going within to heal. Would you, I don't know, was that, was that for you? We can't talk for everybody, but was that the case? I will, I will say from my own personal experience, we are the one who choose timing. Okay, so what I mean by that is that if we align, we are in the right vibration because all of this twin flame thing is the mirror, the, the part of healing and being the mirror is for only one purpose and one purpose only is to go within, to not be codependent from outside and to align to a highest vibration as possible. So if you can do that and be at a stable consistency of it. So what I mean by that, because that's difficult with the human emotions that we have. So what I was guided that we be above human emotion and not in an egoistic way. Above human emotion means to understand why we have these feelings that we feel, to understand, to, to embrace it and not numb it, to deal with it. And then to be able to shift our energy and not be in this lowness of guilt, shame, and feeling sad for so long that we are on this high vibration to go back with it. And I'm not talking about let's go high vibration and I'm going to say it out loud, okay, and I'm going to have this toxic positivity. That's not what it is, okay? It's far from that. It's being surrendering to the universe and telling the universe you know what i know that what happened has happened for the highest good for my journey and i believe that what's happened was meant to happen and i accept it and i learn the lessons that i actually need from it and then i acknowledge the feelings that i feel as a human being and then i let go and then you come at this feeling of peace, this peace within you and being your most authentic self rises your vibration. So previously, I, I call them my human moments. I would have, <laughs> I could go for two weeks feeling like crap, okay? And then with going through this journey, it's reduced maximum if it's like something really catastrophic, three days, maximum, usually I'm not, I'm not upset more than 15 minutes. So you become the observer almost. And it's interesting because you were talking about how it's not this toxic spirituality. Because with Twin Flames, it's about grounding that godly energy on earth. So it's almost becoming, not getting high, but getting peaceful, right? Getting loving and peaceful yes. within and grounded. Um, and do you ever get to a stage which I feel like I have started to get to and I used to read about it where they used to, and it used to make me feel like no because on Quora for example is to say you know the twin flame journey it's about ascension it's not about your twin flame it's about getting with God and healing the internal aspects and purification I was like no I want my twin flame I want to flame. but then I feel like I don't know how you get to a point what I have where it's total surrender where you're attachment for the 3d goals and you're totally detached from money from success from ego from even you even transcend the twin flame which is a little scary at times and i'm i do get comments about that and i didn't used to understand and i don't know if because i used to think that it was just a block that you were numbing that you because people would say divine feminines would say i don't know i no longer have feel attraction for my twin flame or no longer feel this i'm in bliss i'm okay i've detached and I used to think it was just a block, but I feel like you can get to a stage where you literally are in bliss all the time and you transcend the need for the twin flame. Um, the twi I always thought the twin flame was what you needed to, to, to ascend and to help the world. But now I think maybe you can do it alone also with God. So is that like part of surrendering? Is that an element do you feel or is that like the depths of surrender okay what from my own understanding and i always say i reference it my own understanding i've understood that 
when we're brought down into this third third dimension to this world to this earth we were separated from source or the loving god that was because when we came into this third dimension that separation has created a void within us and that void we try to fill it with everything outside so it could be money status power love all the labels that you want to make ourselves feel good and so when everything in this world when we start dealing with everything on the outside we start dealing it through a separation feeling. So what, what does that mean? That would be like, you did this and I blame you and it's your fault and I'm blah, 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 blah. And you should treat me and boundaries and borders. And I'm not saying to be somebody that stepped on, but we have no compassion for others because we're too needy and we see everything separate. Now, the issue with that is that no matter what we try to get from this third dimension, it will never fill that void. That void can only be filled with connecting back again with God, source, divine, and universe. And then we feel complete from the inside by feeling worthy for just existing. And when we connect, is when we start feeling unity for everything and not separation for everything that's uh, that's outside of us. Now, because the divine is so loving and so merciful, he never forces us to go back to him. He allows us to go through the experience to choose to go back to them. Now, when you start asking my prayer remember the prayer that i told you is just asking for your vessel to expand itself i asked for the divine to connect and so the divine will always connect with you and then when that does happen it will bring you situations to catalyst and to remove all those social constraints your mind constraints your reality constraints and break down every the theological or philo philosophical or mental idea that we have or social idea that we have about the world that is around us in order to go deep inside to ourselves and feel that connection with the source. And only through that do we feel unconditional love, worthy, and peace. Then do you get do you get to a point where you no longer want the twin flame? Definitely. Definitely. Why? Because I'm sustained from within myself. Unfortunately, in this world, we are giving out everything to everybody in expectance that everybody will give us and love us in return because we gave everything. And we're like this tree that is so dried up Yet we create this one little apple and we give it to somebody with expectance that they're going to give it to us in return. And what happens is that that will always lead us to disappointment because we didn't give it out of sustains or a not need of it. And let's see any tree. In reality, no tree will bear fruits if it's not sustained from itself, it will take the, the food from the earth, it will take the sunlight, it will be flourishing, and then it gives the fruit out with not a need or a want. And so unfortunately, as humans, we, 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 we want to put all that energy in that one fruit and we're going to give this to this person and we, we want that to, to go back in. Once we give fruits and love, when I say fruit, that could be love and unconditionally and compassion and, 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 and feeling out in the world. We're already sustained from the inside. We won't need anything from the outside. So in reality, you, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but you, you come to this point that there is no need beyond you because you already have all your needs sustained from the divine source and provides you everything and what people don't understand about the twin flame journey itself 
is that people think that, okay, I'm not going to be complete until I have this divine counterpart. But in reality, twin flames, in order to reach union, they must be sustained with source on both the third dimension and fifth dimension. And what I mean by that is that you're able to manifest things, you're able to alchemize the energy, you are able to as well, um, able to be physically successful in all its means of what the third dimension would say. You are able to sustain yourself and you're okay inside and out your balance that is only when twin flame union will happen but alia when you get to that stage of total surrender total detachment from needing anything um how does union happen then because you don't really need it or want it and it can seem like a deterrent in some respects of having attachment on your spiritual path is there a choice okay. that is there a choice that one has is there you know, because there's people on my channel who are like so obsessed still and it's all about the twin flame and the union and that. But what you get to a point where it's almost like you have let go of everything, then yes, then there's there is no need. So then how would union happen at that point? OK, because it is a, a twin flame is an energetic dance. OK, it is like a pendulum. And what happens is once one sways, you know, when you when you push something far, it will come close to you. And when you try to put something close to you, it will when you let it go, it will go far. And only when you are in this balanced state that two pendulums can actually be in existence because they're balanced and they're not moving or shaking. That's the best way that I can explain it. But the thing is, is that we are obsessed because what we feel with this twin flame is what we actually want to feel within ourselves, deep inside from ourselves and what we want from source. So then does, I hope that that answered the question. Yeah, well, I'm going to ask a follow-up. <laughs> does, does there come a choice then where one decides, I don't want union? We always have free will, but I will say one thing, and this is was given to me in a meditation, and I hope this can answer your question. Okay, and what is is that if the river is always meant to get to the ocean, no matter what are the obstacles and what are the path is, the river will flow to the ocean because divine and universe has chosen that. So you believe, like, because I heard some people say free will, but then some people talk about divine will, like it's not in your control. Like it will, if it's meant to be, the divine will will have its way, you know? I, I always believe something about free will and divine will, and I would like to give it as an example, and hopefully that can clear things up. So I always believe that divine and free will acts like you're in a video game and you come to this maze and this pathway where you have two doors in front of you. You have door A and door B. And then I choose this door A. And when I open door A, I have door C and door D. And then I choose door D and then comes E and F. And then when I go to, cho to ch open door F, I'm standing right in front of door B because that was what was meant to be to begin with. <laughs> And hopefully that example can give you a combination of what is divine and what is free will. So when we come to this earth, we've already chosen what we want to learn on this earth. We already chosen as well what we want to go through and what our purpose and our divine purpose. And I'm not talking about our jobs on earth and our money and our, you know, like, and our uh, and our fame and all of these titles that we have on earth. No, 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 no. These are just earth things. I'm talking about purpose on earth. Why did we come here? Divine purpose. We chose it. So we we chose the the ending of the story. We chose the main chapters in the story. 
of why we came to earth but let's say what how do we feel these little in these little chapters inside that will eventually lead to chapter two that we already put the title that will eventually lead to chapter three that we already put the title that will eventually lead to the end of the book the way that we did put it in that is where free will comes in right but you'll get to the destination no matter what you do you'll get to the destination so there is both here and there there is because you know you, that do, you do hear about will. some divine feminines who choose not to get union i don't know but maybe that's their divine will we'll leave it as that and we'll move on um, and that could be their divine journey as well and that's what they already they already signed up when they came yeah. on earth as well so i i wouldn't be able to know and as i always say it is a personal journey it is a personal journey so i want to talk about um your twin flame and your catalyst because we're still in the midst of that so your twin flame you <laughs> met 20 years ago and you were at school or something or yes i was and at that time when you met them you didn't know they were your twin flame but there was feelings of obsession or did you feel a feeling of safety uh, familiarity or i when i first saw them i felt the familiarity i i felt the feelings i felt there was something there i felt it i felt through time that i felt safe i felt this unexplainable thing that i can see that person even if there's at a distance it, what they're going through in a dream and in the beginning i would send a message you know like oh are you going through this and that person would be like wtf what are you talking about right and then after time they got used to it and of course that person chose to a significant other a karmic or whatever you want to call it and at that time during that separation it brought up all my insecurities now i won't lie to you and tell you did i heal some of it yes but not to the amount needed in order to be on the journey that i am on today okay okay sometimes it seems like it's never ending the amount that needs because i had a coach and she was like go deeper go deeper and i was like how deep do you need me to go what did you do for your inner work what was your inner work in particular well see this is what i thought my inner work because we always have this thinking we're thinking about it and not letting the flow of the universe take the guidance or whatever it needs so i was like okay so i'm gonna go and do timeline therapy and i'm gonna go do hypnosis and i'm gonna do past life regression and i'm gonna go tackle it all right now this was before 2020 and i've i did five years of different therapy and i studied therapy my own self because i loved it so much that i wanted to help and heal the world right because we have this hero embedded things in us so did you learn nlp because i'm trained in timeline oh definitely and all those totally, things. definitely <laughs> hypnosis therapy you name it okay brain coaching uh neuroplasticity you just name it i'll tell you yeah yep yeah, check 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 and i thought that i knew it all right because we have that flamboyant ego yes i know everything no we do not know everything the universe knows everything we were just on this little journey that we are we are learning all these things right and and so i thought i healed until I told you that I went on that spiritual journey. And because I thought I healed, I didn't know how much I, I, I healed. I healed. I healed some of the aspects, but there was no surrender. There was no letting go. There was still this big, huge amount of an ego. I mean, I can only say one tenth went away with that five years of therapy that I did, but it wasn't enough. So did your twin it flame wasn't. trigger you constantly because of, or did you just block him out? Oh, I blocked him out. See, that's what I said. We choose that timeline of separation. It wasn't enough. And that's why universe came and intervened, of course, after that prayer, as I said, and then intervened and brought me this catalyst. And then I was like, holy crap, what is this? So what, right? <laughs> what is a catalyst and how was it? What did it feel like? it felt okay first of all we had this uh my catalyst that i had first i did not meet them personally i met them online it was out of a coincidence i saw a picture of them and i wrote on the picture you know what a nice smile and that is so not me okay i 
I I can cringe at people, and especially when it comes to social media, I'm like, uh, okay, I'm not going to really reach out, especially as in a guy. And in the context of my culture that I am, reaching out to a guy and say, oh, you have a nice smile, you know, it's just a big no, no, you just don't do that, right? And I don't know what the hell, why did I do that? And I totally forgot about it, totally, totally forgot about it. <laughs> Here comes. And he's like, message me. Hey, how are you? Is everything? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, my God. The person, like, we had a phone call. And I was like, okay. I literally was on that phone call. They were talking about something that was personal to them. And I, I felt everything. Similar to the twin flame or different? Hmm. That's a good question. Because it's like 20, that was 20. This, the, the, I'll say what was the difference at that time. And what was the difference with my twin flame this time when I, after the catalyst, so then we can differentiate them a little bit. Uh, I didn't, I didn't have a recognition. I, like I just felt everything and I felt like I was word vomit, vomiting. And what I meant by that, I was literally telling everything you think of to this person and literally telling them all all the shit that I went through, excuse my French, but all the shit that I went through, and I was just like, blah, talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking, and, talking. and I was just like, you know, I'm, I usually am the type of a person that I just keep things in and I bottle up. Why am I talking? And he listened, obviously. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't even know if he listened. I mean, I don't even know, but I'm just blabbing it out. <laughs> and I don't blab things out. It was so weird. So then I start researching, like, okay, like I can feel this person surround me. And and that person had this intuition of like, like he would be like, okay, so you're probably I was like, I'm gonna light up candles. They're like, you're probably gonna light up a lavender candle. I was really I, that's what I did. Oh, so you're gonna probably have lunch, you're gonna probably have an egg, say. And I'd be like, WTF, what, what's happening? How how is this person knowing me? And I can feel this person's essence. So I was like, okay, this is weird. What is this? Right? And I started, and this person's like, like a thousand miles away, doesn't even live in my same city, never met this person online, talked to this person for five times only within four years, but I was able to literally understand them, feel them, know them unexplainably. So what was it? Uh, is it a soulmate, a catalyst? What is it, a catalyst? I w I, why I call it a catalyst because eventually the universe channeled that that was not your twin flame, but that was a catalyst. And I really don't like these labels because labeling is so, you know, you go, go different places. We love labeling things as humans. And, you know, I, I like to, I prefer to say that this is just somebody that was along my journey to where it, whatever, wherever destiny is going to. Who pushed you back towards your twin? Definitely pushed me back towards my twin. Pushed me back to myself. So this pushed me to see every insecurity in me that I wasn't seeing. Pushed me to see everything that I still needed to 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 heal. Pushed me in all aspects to see every ego or everything that I was masking on me. And how long did this journey with the catalyst last? Four years. Four years. And it was intense or it was long distance or you met up? It was all a long distance, it was all online and it was it was but the amount of crying, the amount of breaking down, the amount of internalizing, amount of blocking and unblocking and blocking and unblocking was was equally as a twin flame. Wow, which must be quite confusing for people because you know that, definitely because some people call it a false twin flame or this and that and the other so he, this person pushed you back to a twin flame in which respect how did that happen you channeled it you channeled that your true twin flame is the first person from 20 years ago or what happened not really no not at all i mean i didn't channel this until later on and then I, I will tell you exactly what I channeled so that I knew what it was. And I went through past lives within my meditation so that I can, I can tell you that. But 
after I was like, okay, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I can't take this anymore. And you know what? I surrender that, that this is it. A year prior to the last year that I had, so on the third year of the catalyst, I saw, because we always ended, stayed close, but not too close. So I would see them once a year and see how they are. And that was it, you know, like a one hour cup of tea. Okay, I reminded that you still exist. Okay, bye-bye, you know, <laughs> that's how it was. So I saw them on the year, third year, my twin flame, and they were like, you know what? You know, um, they were trying to open doors with me, like, you know, I still have feelings or blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, okay, let's just put this underneath the carpet. I'm not going there. You know, uh, you know, it's like, I'm not going to even touch that with a 10 feet pole. But, okay. But this is your twin flame, right? And your twin flame was yeah. with, with the karmic at that time, or they left the karmic? And still, still with the karmic, still with the karmic. And this is why we have no union at the moment because there's still work to be done and every time we say surrender there are 20 million things to surrender we think surrender is only one little thing and then we find out oh no there's another level and there's another level and as you said it's endless but yes it's always working so for both of us what is the purpose of the karmic in your union ah uh, that's a good question the karmic always serves as first to know what we don't want in life. Second, to under, to first balance every karma that we have done on this earth prior. Okay? The third thing is the karmic, um, it, the karmic shows you aspects of you that not as healing, but as triggering. It triggers to show you where's your Blind spots. north. Oh. Yeah. To show you where's your north or where is your journey. It changes you, but not to the extent of going very deep within. And you know your uh, divine masculine, I'm assuming, your twin flame and you're the divine feminine. Have you Correct. seen in the 20 years his like um, progression mentally, spiritually, development? Because you've been doing a lot of work, right? You've been channeling the divine. I don't know if your divine masculine was spiritual before, religious before. Has that improved for him? Are you seeing benefits of? Yeah. What I found is that the gifts that I have from channeling and the gifts of telepathy are equal. And he had told me physically in the third dimension that I channel and I hear and I, they see premonitions just like I do. So let's, equally. let's talk about this because they say the divine masculine is less evolved. Some people say less spiritual, they're more matrixy, but then they also have an innate feeling or knowing about things. And definitely with my one, I felt like I was talking to myself when I was talking to him but he wouldn't use the spiritual language. So with your twin flame, do they have the same gifts uh, mirrored? Is that common? Or, uh, so if you get to a certain stage, say we're going to talk about 3D and 5D because you mentioned that. Say, for example, I've got 5D. Will my twin flame get to 5D? Like, how does it work? From my own understanding and what I've seen personally, um, it's not... Each one of the twins needs to balance both energies within themselves. They need within themselves, correct. So the divine feminine is sometimes can be too masculine and needs to go back to the divine feminine. Sometimes the divine masculine is too feminine, needs to go back to the masculinity. We need to find that balance within ourselves. And what people don't understand is that in order to be balanced, the divine feminine is the spiritual side, is the spirit to under have the intuition side. The divine masculine is succeeding in the third dimension and, uh, and, and as well as being able to lead on earth. So you need to have these both aspects within both the divine feminine and the divine masculine balanced.
So when somebody tells me, are they spiritually not awakened and one is more developed in my own perspective, I would say this person is your mirror. So they always have that power. But because the divine masculine is more caught up in the masculine or in the head, they are not in tuned into their emotions or their intuition. And this is why separation has to happen. So they're being more open to that, being more intimate with their emotions and expressive with their emotions and more connected to the vine with their intuition. And how does that happen? So they say the divine feminine is the leader. So is it as she heals, the masculine is forced to heal or as she heals, something is automatically done for him or he has to do it as well. He has to do the work as well. From my own experience, uh, both have to do the work. And whatever separation is or whatever is happening, it is for both to heal at the same time in different aspects within themselves to create that balance within their being from both energies. And is one a leader then and the other one just follows that or they choose as one? And from my own experiences, it's like, do you know that yin and yang circle? So one can be leading at a moment and pushing the other and then the other can be leading and then pushing the other so it is they interwine as i said it's a dance so it's never one is leading and then the other is leading because it's just that loop in the yin and yang circle that are pushing constantly as an energy ball thank you um so much information i want to know um what's the difference between the 3d and the 5d and then you have the 4d in between do you know much about the brief explanation of that. Okay, from my own perspective, again, I always say my own journey, and what I have seen. The, the third dimension is everything that we see physical. So it's a physical manifestation of the energy on the earth. Because we are a spiritual being in a body, okay, so we are spirit first or a soul first before we're this physical essence the soul knows everything within us so knows all the ultimate truth knows why we came here on earth it's the person that guides as a sometimes they call it the higher self that is our soul within us so all souls come from one consciousness from the divine which is part of the divine and so 5d is just when we are not in this or physical body or when we allow ourselves to transcend our mind and our monkey brain or our thought the one that talks and everything and we're in a state of meditation to receive that oneness of consciousness and what 4d is just for me is just that transition phase between that non-physical aspect of the soul and the physicality of the body before you transition and being able to tap in. So for me, when I channel, it is constantly being in a state of meditation, but being away. And what I mean by that is that I always, I always explain it like a cup. Your cup, if it's has half, if it's filled with juice, you cannot fill it with anything else. And so if you try to fill water with it, it will overflow. So what you need to do is that that cup is usually in a human experience is always filled up with our past, our programming, and our anxious of what will happen in the future. And when we have that cup so filled up, we don't have enough space for the divine to come in to us. And so we have to try to empty everything and have no thought at whatsoever so you can be very observant of this world and then allow the divine to fill that cup. And so you're in this constant state of being present in the moment that there is nothing that you're judging 
trust me. A lot of times I'm like, okay, this person looks blah, 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 blah. No, don't judge, don't judge. Go back, go back, go back, you know? Because we're humans. We have to judge. Everything is a perception, right? And then what happens is you're in a constant, constant now moment. And this is where Ecohart says the power of now being in this existence so that you don't have no judgment, no thought, no nothing. And you allow to see the signs and the presence and to channel and to hear beyond human abilities. Beautiful. So that's the best way I can, so I can put it. Is right. there, are we able to maybe get a demonstration today about your channeling? Are we the empty cup today to bring in the <laughs> light? Is there anything that we need to hear um, that will help? our viewers today. Okay, so what I hear from today is do not give hope because everything is possible when you believe. So believe in miracles from the divine. You just need to be open to receive it and open to see the signs. Understand that a experience that has been made from the divine in the heavens cannot be perceived through a human mind so understand that when things are difficult it is only to awaken the divine parts within you that you have never experienced through your human mind. And that is why the human mind is judgmental because it's never experienced it in this lifetime. And to understand that as human beings, Having feelings is the beauty of experiencing this world. Thank you. Aliyah, it's been wonderful. Are there any final um, things you want to talk about? Are there any things like services you provide? Because you're trained in so many modalities. We've got your social media link. If there's any email or website links, we can put them in as well. But are there any sort of things that you want to offer or people can reach out to you for? Um, I don't offer services because this is not what I do in real, the third dimensional life. Um, but whoever does come to me for guidance, I always offer without anything in return because it's part of my service and purpose on earth. So I know that they're just meant to, to meet me. Um, but no, I don't, I don't offer these spiritual things as services at all. And, but those who do reach out to me and ask for guidance or need something, it's part of my purpose and I'm always here to serve. So when you channel, are you channeling source, the angelic realm, higher self, and the person's twin flame? Like, why are you channeling? Okay. So just so that you're aware, we can, everybody can channel if they want to. So it's not something like, oh my God, I am this, you know, specific person. But we need to train ourselves to be able to channel. We can all do it, but we have different methods of channeling. So it's not one size fits all, right? Some people have the, the ability to hear and some people have the ability to see in your mind's eye. And some people have dreams and some people have these feelings these are all intuitions. You just need to tap into what's your gifts in life. Um, the other thing that I want to say is that we, we all just need to calm the mind and be able to be in a state of just existing. And we can see the signs very clearly, very, very clearly. But we have to choose it. And so we are all chosen. I cannot say I'm special and you're special and I'm, you're not special because we all come from one consciousness. 
all of us are equal. All of us are important, regardless of what religion we are or what faith we are or what uh, uh, authenticity we are or what orientation, sexual orientation we are. We are all from the same, the same divine consciousness and we all have that ability to connect. So I would say connect because, and put the intention of connecting and, what and trust are we, me. What are you connecting to specifically? Source, so. and we can all do it. We don't need to have something in between. We don't need to have that angelic realm. We don't need to have these barriers and blocks. We put these barriers and blocks when we can reach out to the ultimate source, the divine. And we can reach out with no interventions. And that's no inter for a lot of the twin flames out there who get readings and tarot cards and become uh, almost codependent on answers when the answers are within. Yes, correct. And do understand, energy never lies. And why I say that? Yes, I'm not going to say we like to know the answers and the tarot and blah, blah, blah. But we are still codependent on those readings. So we are still putting out energetically chasing as a divine feminine. When we're looking at those readings and we're doing all these things, we are energetically chasing and our twin flame feels it. So they energetically and physically run. I wouldn't advise that. Yes, I will say sometimes we need those reassurance. But if we believe that divine has a plan for whatever it's going to be out in the end of the day, whatever we had, whatever we agreed on that we don't know, right? But we believe that it's for our highest and best and surrender and the best good of ours. We know that it's going to happen the way it's meant to happen. We don't chase. We don't chase. Thank you very much, Alia. We will have to do another session, uh, another interview at another time, but just the information you hold is just so invaluable. And as I get more questions, I will surely come to you. But yeah, Definitely. thank you very much, Alia. Um, you're welcome. welcome anytime. You're welcome. You're welcome.